And this is our IBM 1401. Actually, our two IBM 1401s. And here's the uh, one we call the German one because we bought it and brought it from Germany with the printer and the tapes. And here's the Connecticut one that was found uh, in somebody's basement in Connecticut, uh, fully equipped with the printer and the tapes and the card reader and puncher and we have a sorter and a, a bunch of um, 26 key punches these take a whole team of 20 people to keep going they, I've never seen them run more than two weeks at a time, so we're in constant debug mode. Uh, but most of the time, we have one of them running. So here's the front panel. Uh, hopefully, we'll turn it on in a minute. It will work. And no, this is just very beautifully made. It's everything is in. No doors like these take them off and then it's made out of those SMS cards bunch of cards each car is about you no know, two to six transistors on it and about 20,000 transistors the machine 2,000 cards first transistorized computers <laughs> for you know, the business machine. There you go. And uh, you know, we have a card failing every no now and then. Every couple of weeks one fails. Uh, power supply on this side. And on the other side, uh, that's where the, you know, the core of the machine is, as a 4K memory system and the counters for hours up there. This is the uh, core memory block uh, for the 1401. That's a 4K memory with the little ferrite cores here. So this is 4K one bit and there's a whole bunch of planes for each of the bits. Uh, some are specialized planes for the printer and the puncher, they have less cores. It's just an amazing piece of technology, and that was, of course, the most expensive bit of the computer. That's the printer, which to me is still amazing by this, to this day and age. Um, it's a flying chain. You don't really see the chain, but it just keeps turning. No flying characters around and there are these 130 hammers and they hammer it just at the right time and to produce characters and it just goes at 600 lines per minute uh, so it has the paper moves so fast it has a hydraulic ram which means we have leaks <laughs> hydraulic leaks over the and here is the 1402 card reader the ma main way to feed programs and information into the machine and this one is giving us fits. Um, it always has, but now more than ever, uh, it doesn't work at the present. So we're probably going to work on it today. 600, uh, 800 cars per minute. When that thing's going, it really smokes. A few of the volunteers and original IBM guys coming in for their shift. Smile, you might be on TV. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> the German machine works out of 220, so we need a big converter to make it work. Does it turn on automatically over there? I have to do something. There you go. There you go, 220 volts, three phases, and then we need a little bit of cooling. And that's over Not here. Yet. There you go. We should be in business. Ah, I can feel the breeze.
and then this is the easiest thing to do you go power on yep and that's it that's all it needs it's booted up because there's nothing to boot it up no, a hundred things just had to go right <laughs> is that true? Yeah. it would have shut back off again and, and, it, and it did right so the, the machine works right this one is good that was the miracle of birth alright well <laughs> We should run something on it. I'll turn the tapes on because I like them so much. And so here's my favorites, the tape drives. I think we need to work on them today. And let's see if I can load the tape. Uh, if I press load, that would be better. There you go, and off it goes. And it's a vacuum column tape, right? So here the tape coiling at the bottom and we hopefully get that one working it has a problem it's too much fun I have to do it again ta -da, ta -da. and again Woo! this one is unhappy didn't have enough tape so I need to stop that one Okay, we'll fix that. That should work better now. Load, rewind, crunch, mm -hmm. slurp, loop, up, beginning of tape, ready. Alright, so our tape is not responding. So we have a new problem of the day. That's totally usual, right? Uh, this uh, tapes don't work. You know, they worked a few seconds ago, and now we have a right latch failure, the right indicator right there. which and we already have the schematic book open. And this should be reset by this line right here. We'll find out why the latch won't reset. All right. Should we go do it? Yeah. Alright, let's find out where that card is. So our tape controller is toast. And we're going to try to untoast it. Is it the gate down here? Oh, you know it's XA. Ah, okay. Yeah, so the, the location of each card is written in code over here. It's XA. Get, get XA. XA D18L is where I should be getting the missing. Okay, so that should tell us where the card is. So we think now that card is bad. We got the wrong signal at the output. So what we need to do is replace it with an equivalent one. problem with it? Well, it has something and maybe it means that they fixed it at one time and they stuck a thing in here. Well, those are cute little transistors. They're not the original ones. Yeah. Ow. Yeah, so they, they replace it with silicon transistors. Yeah. That would be it here, back right? in over there while holding the camera. This is... Not recommended, no, I'm not trying. Oh, you, you want to go a little higher. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. There you go. Alright, see if that works better now. So we changed that one, that one, that one, and that one, still nothing. <laughs> so we just pulled that card out is that fellow and then with no signal coming out of it now the reset works it's not the right light is out so 
something was not right with this. Either the signal's coming in or the signal's coming out. Oh, are you going to paddle in a program? You ought to fix that. What's wrong with it? It's got a dim. Oh, yeah. Not acceptable. Oh, it's very dim. So, these are the address switches. Run all three? Sure. How do you do that? There we go. That's what I call a deep drive.